Happy Mother's Day, everybody. And uh, that goes for mother of human children and for mothers of uh, fur babies, because we are still mothers. No matter if, you know, I had that one time, I had a meme made like there that said, species doesn't always define family, you know? And I know that uh, we are all proud of our babies, no matter who the babies are. Okay. No, thank you. Hi, Darlene. Hi, June. Hi, Cherry. Now, before I start, I just want to show you something because I am so thrilled with it. Hi, Sonia. I found a new nail polish brand that I am really happy about. I mean, look at this. Look at this beauty. Uh, normally, they are between 990 something and 12 something, but if you follow, and I added them in my Amazon influencer store in the nail polish, if you follow them, they go on sale uh, once in a while. This is the one that I got today, and I saw that now it's again on $9 something, but when I got it, it was 536 and this is another color I got about a week ago. It's called Icebreaker. And then you've seen me with another one. Uh, but I just got one of them, the first one, because it just came up when I was looking for something. That's something that I would be interested in. And it was on sale, so I got it. And it wears beautifully. Hi, Joan. Hi, Hermie. Hi, Witch Willow. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Carol. So if you want something really, really awesome. And yeah, I have a few more on my private wish list, but you might want to go check. So the the brand is called Color Club. And they have all kinds of holographic and chameleon and all kinds of stuff. They are awesome. Uh, hi, Ellen. So today we are going to cover a bowl with cane slices and i made some canes last sunday but what i want to tell you is that <clears throat> what i wanted to make this like is how to it was about how to make a bowl using cane slices hi chris <coughs> excuse me and not necessarily the, the canes i made uh last sunday but generally canes and what you should pay attention to. Hi, Sharon, when you're using canes to cover a bowl. Uh, what I did extra from last Sunday, number one, I did reduce these. As you can see, I reduced them to about uh, half an inch. And, uh, to that I made. And I also made some uh, stripe canes. If you did not watch yet my stripe canes tutorial, let me get it out for you. Let me turn my sound off. Okay, let me post a link. Because I have two striped canes tutorials, one that's much older and it's not very um, good quality. This is the one that I did last. So it would be a much better quality than the others. And I also showed the trick on how to make a striped cane easier. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Linda. Hi, Mary. So, I made one with uh, sunshine and black and one with the wisteria and black. And if need be, we can make some more. That is. And then I have a whole bunch of... Uh, I lost my screen. A whole bunch of um, uh, scrap that I got, uh, I ordered a new pair of uh, square pairs from Tiny Pandora, 
because she replaced if you remember in the last one i noticed that my larger square pairs have cracked and i think i'd better focus this thing not let it focus by itself because it keeps going boom boom and pisses me off um and now she has them uh solid they are not hollow anymore Yes, that is why I wanted this mat so badly. Because there are some mats, let me explain to you why I chose this specific one. Uh, they are um, the preserved memory mats that are white and they have uh, green lines and they also have some angles and stuff, which have been awesome, would have been awesome. But uh, the problem was that I wasn't sure, number one, uh, that the those thin green lines would show properly on the camera. And number two, I wasn't sure about the glare. Hi, Linda. Hi, Gaylene. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Uh, then the other ones that were white with lines, that was the other, that the main thing. I was afraid about the glare because uh, otherwise I'm very happy with my old, old... Uh, fondant work sugar craft white board but remember it gives a lot of glare i will still keep it around and on some uh tutorials i will still be using it but uh this is why i think honestly i'm not i think that it gives a little bit more of a somber look to my tutorials but i still think that it is necessary especially when i'm doing canes or measuring and uh things Hi, Frandel. Hi, Donna. And yes, it is in the tools section of my Amazon influencer store. Now, our main thing, uh, when you cover a, cane, uh, a bowl, and I did post a link to these on Amazon in the video description, but I also said if you have a big lots, I don't know about the dollar store or whatever, uh, but I got these at Big Lots for $4.50 for a set of, I think they were four, three or four. Anyway, on Amazon, it's a set of four for $7. But they are just uh, adorable and the perfect size for making polymer clay bowls. And they are very easy to remove. And also, they have this little edge here that gives an extra dimension. And I'm really happy with them. Hi, Cecile. Hi, Linda. Happy Mother's Day again. So, our first thing, uh, whenever you do this, is first you have to prepare something for the very bottom. Uh, what you have to keep in mind is that unless you plan on covering, making a different covering on the inside after you do it, and the way that I'm going to show it how to make is uh, how to make the bowl without leaving the glass bowl inside. I mean, it will be once it's done, we remove it from the glass bowl and it's going to be, you know what, I forgot to bring some to show you. Just a second. Some of you have seen my little bowls before, but people who are new or haven't. And um, hi, Noemi. Hi, Colleen. Uh, but what I like the most is they are perfect for holding little uh, gemstones, as you can see. This was one that I made in one of the lives with the sponsors. This was also a Mila Fury that I made in a live with the sponsors, and it is transparent. And this was just made with some cane remnants. And this is an example of a different, see, this isn't even, it only has a cane on the, 
uh, on the rim. And inside it's practically the leftovers from a butterfly mokumegane. And you see I did the outside with an extra layer of translucent, so it looks a little bit different. But uh, what I wanted to say, I have some more around the house, but, is that your main thing is that if you do uh, canes, you kind of hi Linda. Oh, I already said hi Linda. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, you kind of want to do to make sure that uh, the way that it looks on the outside, you have to keep in mind it's going to look on the inside as well. So because of that, you will have to create the very bottom. Now with the very bottom, you can do several things, and that's why I kept. Uh, you can do several things. One of the things that I like, and I'm going to show you, and I don't know why I took my black away. Duh. I cleaned my table. <laughs> uh, there are two ways that you can do it. And uh, you can actually make a whole bowl like that. Hi, Laos. So first thing, what you do is you grab a piece of whatever scraps you have. And generally speaking, you kind of try not to get more than your best bet is thickness of the bowl for it to be nice and sturdy without becoming chunky. Uh, you want to go for what would be about three millimeters or one eighth to three sixteenths, something like between one eighth and three sixteenths of an inch. <coughs> so you want your very bottom to be just a pinch thicker. So you can kind of calculate. So yeah, I need a little bit more here. And I should have brought two balls to show you the whole thing. How you can make the whole bowl with that. I might actually run real quick to the kitchen and get a second bowl. So you kind of try and calculate how much it would be to cover your hole. So this would be a tad too much. So yeah, I want this, this, and pretty much half of this. And I'm going to just put them together. Yeah, Dara has a piece of land right in the middle of nowhere with all the happinesses, joys, and cons that that can be. I dreamed of having a farm, but once I got disabled, that went out the door, the window. Anyway, so you just make a cylinder. And then you want to get some black or, you know, whatever darker color you have in your, because the cylinder, you make it with the uh, cane scraps. But as I said, and see, uh, another thing, I'm jump, jumping from one to the other. Uh, as I said, with these cellophane bags, if at any point your hands don't work very well to pull them out, you just can rip the bag because they are so uh, cheap that you don't really care. So this is a piece of that sticky black. So I'm going to get it through the pasta machine on a thick setting. And 
and then I'm going to wrap my cylinder. Let me make it more cylinderish. But uh, as I said, you can make the whole bowl like this. And it, it's kind of like an extended, it will look kind of like an extended straw bell cane. But it will be using a spiral. Why did I cut it like this? I didn't, wasn't supposed to cut it like this. And when you're wrapping, if you're a beginner, when you're wrapping anything to know exactly where you want to cut, you wrap and press a little bit and then unwrap and you'll get a line left here <clears throat> that tells you where you need to cut. And always prefer to be a little bit less because if you have over, you're going to have a thick thing, uh, side, but if you are just a little bit short, you can just pull them together. So the next thing, Messy Maggie, the next thing is to simply roll this nicely into a snake yeah yeah i know i've been saying that i need to make a tutorial with all the lingo and you want your uh, snake to be fairly nice and equal <clears throat> whenever you're working this always check your ends because they'll have the tendency to do this so you kind of want to <clears throat> pinch them together, even if you're not going to use them. But that helps with not allowing it to go longer inside the snake thing. And as I said, you can do the whole bowl with this. Yeah, yeah, and, and a lot of times, you know, I, I don't realize I'm using some terms that are well known for somebody who worked with clay for a while, but for somebody who's a beginner, that doesn't make a sense, any sense. So I'm going to go fairly thin at, as I said, at about the, a little bit over the thickness that I want the bottom of the bowl to be. And uh, I'll probably just show you how to do the whole bowl or almost the whole bowl and then how you can make it really nice looking. And these you can do in a spiral or you can do in concentric circles. It's up to you how you want your bottom to look like. And I think I'm going to go in concentric circles. And because of that, I am going to first place a little blob. I did not cut what? <laughs> okay, so uh, do I want it this large? Yeah, I think that should be okay. So place this right in the very middle. Then cut. Make sure that you are to the inside and there. Thank you. 
and it's going to be a little bit difficult, okay? And why I'm saying that, because for one, it might get too thin in some areas, but I'm going to put it like this because it's going to be easier to. Now, remember, you have to pay attention both to the inside and to the outside. In this technique, you don't really care much about the outside, but you do care about the inside. Did I manage to cut it? Not really. Sorry, it's my eyesight that's giving me issues. I'm going to waste a lot of clay, but oh well. So, place the cut part on the bowl. As I said, don't worry about the outside because the outside, once the bowl is baked, you sand it off. And next Sunday, we'll, when we do the finishing, I'll show you how to do a perfect sanding to get an absolutely perfect bowl. So your main thing here is to get it perfectly in a circle and check if you got it nice and round. And grab a second part. And it's okay, you can uh, knit them, you know. Yeah, I'm cutting it right now and I'm trying to cut it okay. And without getting out of the screen. Okay. I'm telling you, I can't wait for that surgery. I messed it up. Oh, well. not too bad, though. I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Now see here, it got a little too thin, so I'm going to cut this part off. Let's give it another. And as I said, don't worry, you can get them together. And what you worry about is for them to look nice on the inside. Yeah, I told you, I'm kind of working blindly here. Okay, this is not one, this is one. Yeah, that should work fine. And you can go like this and do the whole uh, bowl like that. Um, if your 
good with cutting. I mean, better than me with cutting this. You can just go with the whole thing. I cannot see. I'm sorry, I'll have to cut this off camera. Well, it's impossible for me to see what I'm doing. And then you just keep going like this. And you can do it just on the bottom or you can keep going and you can make different colors of snake, you know, and alternate them. Just keep checking for your uh, circles to be nice. And when you make, you can make, as I said, you can make the whole bowl like this. <clears throat> See how we are getting from making a bowl with canes to making a bowl with a snake. Um, you can also, you know, roll, uh, wrap the cane remnants and because this is a great way to use uh, scrap from uh, canes. You can first wrap it in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's sunny finally and everything is in bloom and I have a lot of post-nasal drip. Um, wrap it in um, a metal leaf and then put on the black or you can do this with white. Remember that uh, I showed in my stropel uh, cane tutorial that I like to make my stropel canes a little bit unorthodox. Uh, Alice Stropel does the Stropel because she invented the Stropel cane and she does it with black, but I like to make it with other colors. And you've seen like with the latest set uh, that I posted a tutorial on how with some color combinations, uh, white looks beautiful. If you're going to make this, and you can actually create it without having um, uh, clay, uh, scrap clay. If you create it with uh, souffle in all those beautiful earthy colors, it's going and you use white to wrap it, it's going to look absolutely gorgeously ceramic -y, ethnic, beautiful. Okay. So let's keep doing the little concentric circle. Here. And as I said, don't worry much about the outside because next Sunday I'll show you how you can sand this down to total perfection. And it's going to look beautiful. Because you'll just uh, remove the top layer and you'll be left with the and that's what you're worried about how it looks from the inside and you can continue to create this actually let's do make two bowls okay because it's just too pretty to remove this to show you something else so I'm going to cut it again off camera, sorry. But see this uh, grid helps me place the snake and I go to cut it in the middle. And I have this, but what I'm going to do now is, where's my, there it is, is to place some 
<clears throat> some uh, stripe here. If you don't have one of these, these are those super fine uh, blades that you can get at uh, Poly Clay Play. that are absolutely fabulous. So first I'm going to trim this because I did that weaving type of striped cane. And then I'm going to cut it in half pretty much. Stack. I didn't cut it perfectly. Oh well. Things happen. Just more scrap clay. And I'm going to cut it in half again. But this time in length. And now I can start cutting. I did take one right before the live, so I should be okay. About half an hour before the live to make sure that it would start working. So I'm going, remember the thickness that I want to use. This black is so sticky. And this I'm going to cut them again in half. And now we can start placing them. And this will be pretty much the edging of the bottom. And obviously, this one is too long. And now first check the inside and you see how it's not perfect. So, as I said, what you're interested in is the inside. You don't uh, worry too much about the edge because that can be sanded off. And if you have a cutter that's large enough for this, mine is in the kitchen, so I'm not going to go for it. But you can use actually an actual cutter to make sure that you're 
around is perfectly round. continue it's easier to do it in a spiral than to do it in circles Because you don't have to worry about cutting it. But what you want to do is to kind of press them one into each other because you don't want them to become too thin. And yes, once you bake it and you uh, sand it, it's going to be perfectly smooth. Let me wipe my blade a little bit. I need to get to Hobby Lobby to get another one of these rigid blades. It's the only place where I can find super rigid blades. They are supposed to be Amacos, but everywhere I got Amacos online, they weren't so super rigid as these from Hobby Lobby. And I think I'm swallowing air again. I have this habit of swallowing air when I'm talking. And then you can hear a bubble of air going up and down my esophagus. It can be really embarrassing because it sounds almost like a burp, but I'm not burping. I very rarely burp in my life. I was born with the inability to burp, which was very distressing apparently for me when I was a baby. But see, it's quite easy to make this. And I'm not going to go and uh, make it all the way like this. I'm going to finish it off camera. And I'll probably add, but you see how ethnic it looks, how beautiful it looks. I'm going to add probably another line or two of these uh, stripes so we can... Uh, move on to the next so give me a minute here so i can go grab another bowl So this is what's neat with these bowls. They come in a set of four, so you can make several at the same time. Now, what I could do here would be, and I'm going to make this really fast. 
Uh, let me get this out of the way where I wouldn't touch it to mess it up. We can make real quick a uh, scrap clay kaleidoscope cane, and I'm gonna grab these odds and ends that I just messed up. And I'm going to get them through the machine. You see, I kind of separated them a little bit, the black and the purple. Now don't mix them, that's what we're doing. And of course you can add, you know, if you want to. But uh, let's wrap this here. this here and let's triangularize it pinching on the end that we didn't get any wrap on then you simply make a triangle And remember, to reduce a triangle cane, don't press on these because you're going to get caved in. You press on the very top and then you pull. Turn, press on the top, pull. And you want from time to time to turn it on its end against the tile to kind of stop the clay pushing. And at this point, you want to do it in three, cut it in three. I'm going to cut away the very ends. And I have five. Okay. And simply make a in semicircle. That you cut in two. <clears throat> and you can actually cut it a little bit thinner. I don't even have to put it together in a full circle. You can place it on your bowl as a half circle already. Alternately, you can just use one of your ready-made canes and just cut a bit of one, triangularize it, and then make a kaleidoscope out of it. So at this point, I want to I'm 
again check the inside and at this point yes you do want to use a cutter to make sure that everything is nice and round no you don't have to glue at any time anything and you'll be able to remove the glass bowl and leave only the polymer clay my circle cutters and now you have a perfect circle here or, as I said, and we're going to do that, you can just grab a piece of your already made cane. And let's cut. So this would be... Six pieces. Yeah, this should be good. And see how it is? I'm going to triangularize it like this. Even if it's not going to cover entirely perfectly the bottom, I'll show you. I want to make a very uh, perfectly round bottom. And I need six of these little... And I'm counting on removing the edges. Yeah, I'm trying to cheat. coffee lover. I'm coffee lover too. I need a, at least a pot of coffee a day to be able to function because I have low blood pressure. So when you're extending it, go in all directions because you don't want to lose the circleness. Let me see if I missed anything on the chat. Okay. Yeah, Sharon, never use Sculpey 3 if you want to obtain good quality. Sculpey 3 is for children. It breaks. I actually made the a tutorial for beginners. Let me show it to do to you. Mm. 
you might want to watch it. To know what clay, this is special for beginners to know what clay to pick. Yeah, Sharon, you never want to bake uh, polymer clay in the same oven that you bake food in. Unless you're willing to completely, perfectly clean the oven after each and every time you bake polymer clay. Because uh, polymer clay is toxic when it's being baked. Um, your best bet is a countertop convection oven. There are some toaster ovens that work just fine. What you're the most interested in uh, is to have a constant temperature. The regular ovens, they are not good because they have temperature spikes. But, uh, you know, I would go for... 20 minutes, Cherry, that's what the, all the manufacturers recommend, 20 minutes per quarter of an inch thickness. So, yeah, and you want to, to test it with your thermometer first, but you want to taste, test it with your thermometers first in the back of the oven, then in the middle of the oven, in the front of the oven and on each side because some ovens they do have areas that are lower temperature or higher temperatures and you risk to burn your clay okay making sure i placed it right in the very middle okay i see now we have a very pretty bottom but what i'm going to do i'm going to give it a nice black edge to define the bottom even more and depending on what I'm making sometimes I even go to half an hour I know I have people saying that they do it an hour first I find that it's a little bit unnecessary, but, you know, to each their own. But again, it depends on what I am baking, because, um, number one, whenever you're baking, never think, oh, if I bake it at a higher temperature, I can bake it a shorter time, or I can ba bake it at a lower temperature for a longer time, and it's going to be okay. No, it's not going to be okay. You have to bake it at that exact temperature and for that exact amount of time. And I explained before what happens. The polymer clay is actually tiny, tiny blobs of PVC plastic that are in a binder suspension. And when you bake it, those tiny, tiny blobs start expanding and then they connect to each other. Think of uh, how it would be if you would be dripping hot wax on a plate and or if you put on a wax warmer, if you put little beads of wax. And when they start melting, they kind of unite. If you're not going to have the proper temperature for all of them to melt properly, they will not form a layer. If you're not going to have the proper uh, length of time, they will not be able to uh, have the time to get to form the layer. This is why it's very important both the time and the temperature. Okay. No, it doesn't hurt to bake it longer. Uh, the only, your only issue might be with certain brands of clay, the white and the translucent, they can get a yellowish tinge. 
that's the only thing and for that you want to tint but some of them would still get yellowish like Cato translucent is known to yellow out when baked longer well yellows out when you bake it generally but especially if you bake it longer And again, let's check it. And I can use the cutter to make sure. Yeah, it's going to cut a lot of my black, but first of all, I want to make sure that it's all nice against the And again, don't forget that you don't have to worry because it's going to be sanded off and made perfect here. Just make sure that your black clay goes all the way into the round of cane that you place there. And then use your cutter to have a I'm still not happy with this. Okay. Now look from above, I'm going to cut it sideways so I can see properly, but look from above so you can have a perfect even ring of black around the end. Okay, let me catch up on the chat. Yeah, about burning and tenting, uh, I use a square casserole dish for everything. And because it's got the edges, it's a ceramic. Um, it kind of automatically tents. Okay, so now we have a pretty good nice middle time to start working on the canes and let's first get a layer of this so it's the best if you have a grid and again these are my most favorite cane slicers let me actually give you the link if you don't know it. Because right now Trish is running a special on them. You can get a 
eight inch one that's perfect for Mokume Gane and for uh, mica shift and a uh, four inches one that so you get this one that's beautiful for mica shift and Mokume Gane and this one that's for canes uh, for 425 you cannot beat that price so let me get you the link so you can get it in your wish list if you purchase from her. And there we go. Yeah, I have a separate uh, oven just for polymer clay. Yes, they come in a case. They come in cases. So just be very careful when you first open it the first time because they are freaking sharp. They are super sharp. Okay. So wish me luck that because it's a little bit awkward to cut. Now, theoretically, you need to have these in a slight trapezoidal form. But uh, you can get past that requirement in two ways. Number one uh, would be to gently deform your slices after you place them there. And number two, do an actual inlay after you place these. And I think I'm going to have to make a third a bowl off camera so I can show you how to do this for the next time. Thank goodness I have so many little bowls as I told you they come in the set of four I cannot I lost my screen again on baked what Okay, what what is Elaine talking about? Hmm. I know that Anna with the Celebrate Creations made a tutorial with the Dragonfly Glaze. And it looked all okay on what she did. I don't know, I didn't try it yet. The color shift I'm very happy with. It works beautiful. So, essentially, what you do here, you leave it like this. Yeah, dragonfly gla gla glaze. The 
Anna made a, a tutorial. Let me look for it. Give me just a second. It was last week, I think, she made it. Give me a minute and I'll give you the link. Yeah. And I think she used it on raw clay. Uh, I hope she comes online because usually she's here. Yeah, you might want to, to check her tutorial. See how she did it because it looked okay. I mean, I said that uh, I got too much stuff to work on right now, but I put it on my list of stuff to try. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and grab my sunshine because I put it back. As I said, I, I cleaned the table. I didn't realize I was going to need this again. So this time I'm going to get some sunshine clay, which is a color that I used in the clay, in the cane. Yeah, I'm always about expanding operator uh, knowledge base. Because only through operator error we learn how to do things. Okay, so I'm going to go again with the one quarter of an inch. And I was starting to say how you do this uh, this thing. You bake it like this. And after it's baked, you come and just fill these areas with white or whatever other color you want to use. You make an inlay. And to work better, you want to mix your clay with a little bit of liquid clay. Remember, I did quite a number of tutorials on uh, clay inlay. Let me get you a link so you can see how to do it. I actually did it during uh, two, two Sundays ago, the Phobism Pendant. And then a clay inlay in stamp. So this is the clay inlay in stamp. But that way you'll get absolutely perfect stuff. Because otherwise, if you try to put in there little triangles, it might not work. But uh, if you do it this way, it will work beautiful. Okay, and this, this is the one that I did uh, on the other live two weeks ago.
And then you simply, the same as I did in the other live two weeks ago, you simply, um, what call it, send it off. Yeah, a lot of people forget that they can inlay and instead they try to put stuff on top to insert stuff and it doesn't look that uh, neat. The finished product doesn't look that neat. So here all that we need to do is to make sure that it's nice and Pretty all over. Let's grab a little bit of because we want this to be nicely joined to make sure that they are nicely joined here. And of course, you can leave the bowl like this. You can, if you that's what you want, and you want a nice uh, effect. You can leave the bowl with the little holes here. One of these days I should make a tutorial with the so-called woven bowl. Because those look nice too. Okay, here I went a little bit too far. And here too. I didn't get all the way. Hey, get off. Okay, we are good. Now the next the next cane. Making sure that I have no, that's the only problem with the darker mat that if there's something there, oh, yeah, making beads is always a lot of fun. Okay, now let's do this one. And my cane in has been rested for long enough that I don't have to worry about uh, turning it around when slicing because it's hardened up a little bit so it won't flatten. But if your uh, cane is uh, freshly made, you need to, after each slice, you need to turn it over 90 degrees. Otherwise, it will keep getting flatter and flatter. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to have to turn it the other way because I don't see. Amazingly, I saw perfectly with the other one, but with this one I don't seem to see as well. Or my eyes are getting tired. Now I'm going to go in between these. See how I had, I'm not going to go exactly on top of those. I'm going to go in between them. Grab this and lift it. And not only am I going to go in between them, but I'm going to arrange these mirrored as I place them. And with these ones, because I'm on a larger area, I can afford now to gently deform my slices. And I'll show you in a minute how you can achieve the best. It will take, if you don't have a cane bender, you can simply use a paintbrush handle. See, it's not very, okay, this one is too thin. It's not very difficult to make a fairly perfectly arranged slices. Okay, so I need to do four more slices. Okay, perfect. What wrong way? It's not the wrong way. Oh, yeah, I messed up here. Duh, thank you. And it's not perfect. Oh, well, you know what? It's going to be one that's wrote the wrong way. That's fine. Nobody's going to notice. I thought that I calculated okay, but I didn't. It happens, even to the greatest of us all. <laughs> okay, so now how do we get this to be um,
uh, to get perfectly butting against each other, you simply go from the middle of each one. And I said, if you don't have a square pair, just use a paintbrush handle. You know, I have my blue paintbrush handle that I use a lot. So all you're interested in is how it looks on the inside, because remember, most of this stuff, we are going to sand it off. Anything that's not perfectly even and smooth. Don't worry about removing, because see how it's very uneven here. But that's going to be just fine. We will get a perfect... A little ball. And what do you want to make sure is that this comes all the way, even if it's over, see how it's a little bit too thick? It doesn't matter. You don't want to bring it all the way over just to make sure that all your pieces are well stuck to each other. As I said, you don't have to worry about it being even. That will be the job of sanding. And you will see why I love my little sanding wand. And now what we want to do is to come and make sure that everything is in a straight line. Perfect. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, ladies, don't forget that liking and sharing helps my channel a lot. So if you like what I show you, I don't forget to, you know, like and share. Okay, so I'm going to get some white now. And I'm going to insert a line of white. Again, I'm going to give it a one quarter of an inch. And 
and another one quarter of an inch. And then we got one more because I don't know, I might need more than this just to be prepared. Yeah, see, it's a good thing I cut a third one. And I cut it a little bit too thick. This is thicker than one quarter of an inch. And yeah. But I also have this line, this edge here that I told you I like so much because it gives an extra dimension and helps you control if you got your bowl well done. Okay. Now, see I'm looking here and I just go a little bit because normally it does get over here but I'm going a little bit like if it were a little bit too short, about like one millimeter. And it is just fine, it's still, because I don't want it to be too thick in this area. Now again, I'm going to first make sure that it is all the way in against the cane. And then here you have to make sure that they are well against each other. On the inside, it looks okay. Now a little bit of fine tuning here, cause see how you have the this line to go by, and that helps you fine tuning your edging here. Bonsoir Nelly, c'est l'après-midi ici, mais c'est c'est quoi? C'est à peu près huit heures de, du soir en France, n'est-ce pas? Just a little bit here, I need a little bit. And there we go. Perfect lining. Now, 
next so i have this now i have to decide if i want to put a slice here and then have the end with the line <clears throat> with a solid color or if i want to put another solid color here and end with a cane or do both, get a thinner line of solid color and then get another thinner line of solid, solid color. Now, to be very honest, what I would like to do would be the thinner line, thinner line. And I'm going to insert a uh, line of black because I think it kind of calls for it pretty much. Let me see back here and as I said a thinner line I'm going to try and get it to be like one-eighth of an inch I hope I can cut it like this. If not, I might have to cut it on the off the camera to the side. Not we'll see here in a minute if I got it. Hey. Probably did a good job. We'll see here in a minute. If not, this might be a little too thick. All right. So I'm going to place the black on top of the white here. I'll try not to twist it. which is kind of difficult with this crappy black. I told you I got a, a black that is the same as the infamous white was last summer. All squishy and soft and unleachable. Cut this right? No, I did not. Let's do this. You can see how it sticks to the blade. It's horrible. Yeah, it's still it's too thick. I'm gonna just cut it with knife. When I refine it. And again, I'm going to make sure that it is 
will start to the white. Yeah, it sticks to the blade horribly. I hate it. That's why I said that uh, polyforming is not exactly. You know, they are trying to catch up with other brands in terms of coming up with new stuff that the market demands, but I think that they should first try and resolve their quality issues because their product is not constant. I think that they have several, what happens probably, they have several manufacturing sites and in one of the manufacturing sites somebody is not doing their job right so they don't respect the recipe and the proportions as they should and this is why they have all these issues. Okay. Yeah, no, June, that's the problem. It's the same thing as it was with the white two summers in a row. Uh, it's not a matter of, oh, you can leach it and it, it gets fixed. No, because even when you leach, try to leach it, it will still have a certain stickiness and then when you bake it, it feels like pure PVC. It's got this plasticky, nasty feeling to the touch, you know. It's just quality issue. Because believe me, I tried leaching. It's not like I don't know how to leach a clay. But it's not a matter of, of it just being simple, simply too soft. And I noticed with the new colors, the primos were and the, both Primo's and the Souffles, there, there were a few that were like that. The Navy was like that. The Slate was like that. The Cayenne a little bit, not too much, but the, the Souffle, I forgot which of them was nasty. Okay, so we are good on this. Time to place the other cane. Now, if you notice, I seem to have the issue of probably not having enough of the same cane to go around. So what I'm going to do is to alternate the canes. I should have made a little bit more, but oh well. Too late now. The milk is out of the pot. So I'm going to, I already have four slices of sticky black. Okay, that was too thin. What the heck? I'm cutting wrong. There we go. And because we are right on the edge of the 
ball. There will be very little that needs to be done to deform the slices. because they will be pretty much almost perfectly straight on the edge. Let's see if what I want to do is going to work because I was thinking of getting yeah it's a very nasty clay let's see so what I want to try and do is to get this and then I want it like this yeah So one of that and two of these. I did cut some of these too thin. And this one is definitely too thin. I am telling you, I cannot wait for that stupid surgery to happen. I'm going to have to call them again because they said that they were going to mail me the pre-op package. And I didn't get any package in a week. So I know there's still almost a month, but still makes me anxious. And see, hopefully I'll have enough. If not, I'm just going to have to put one of each kind. This is thick. I either cut them too thin or too thick. This is ridiculous. I think my eyes are getting tired. Yes, we are almost done, so it should be okay.
Okay, so I need to just gently push them a little bit. So you notice that I did not press them very hard to the bolt, allowing me to be able to slide gently if need be. So I can have them all nicely aligned and abutting each other perfectly. And again, when I start, uh, where's my little thingy? There it is. When I start getting them, I always go from the middle of the slice towards the edges. And yes, I do want this edge to be a little bit thicker than the rest. That's why I, I cut them a little bit thicker. That's why I was complaining about these ones being too thin. But you want the very rim of the bowl, the same as the very bottom, to be slightly... Okay, this one is too thin. Slightly thicker than... Uh, the rest of the bowl. And you just go from the middle of each slice to get it to be perfectly joined when the slice is next to it. And you're going to ask, what about this? Well, I'm going to do a little pressing down here, but I'm going to do the angle here by sanding. You'll see it's going to be really perfectly getting together. And we want this to be again at the same distance from the rim. So all I want at this point, all that's left is the very edge. And for the very edge, I don't know. Let's still use some black. I think I have a, a better black here. And it should work much nicer. This is a regular black. Hi, Nimue. If I lost anything in the chat, let me... Yeah, usually with the black, what I just do, I use it for um, backing on something. That's the same that I do with the that crappy white. Uh, but I just use it for backing, and that's the or for inlays. That works for inlays really good. Okay, and what I'm going to do is to actually see how I have here a little bit over a quarter of an inch. I'm going to cut me some, I don't know, close to half an inch strips because what I'm interested in at this point is to have the clay coming perfectly in a line to here. I don't really care about the top that's over the rim because I'm going to come and 
simply shave off what's extra. But what I'm interested in is the get rid of first of this stupid bug. And what I'm interested in is for the black line to come perfectly against the line of cane slices. See, right here, that's what I want. And then I'm going to get them joined nicely. And then my last, hopefully, I might have to cut another one. What the heck? Cut it and it doesn't stay cut because it's so sticky. Yeah, of course, I need more. Ugh. Ish. And you want to make sure that it comes all the way in this line of cane slices and that you are here where you put them together. It's nicely joined. Now remember something of all the clays. When you have a solid color, the hardest to sand and buff perfectly is black. It's going to show exactly like black clothing. How the black clothing shows the tiniest speck of lint and dust. This is the same for the black polymer clay. It shows the tiniest scratch. So it's the hardest to make a perfectly sanded and buffed. Okay, now once we are you're happy with this what you need to do is to simply go around like this do a first you know rough trim Yeah, that's why I said you have to pay attention to the inside a lot. Because the inside is super important. So we got the rough trim. And now I'm going to go once again because when you fold it over, it might have the tendency to lift a little bit. So you want to go again against the line of cane slices to make sure that it's nice and well stuck there.
once you do that, you do the second trim perfectly perpendicular to the edge of the ball. And don't worry about rounding it. That's you would waste a lot of time trying to round it when it will only take less than a minute to round it up with the sander. But what you want to make sure is that you have a perfect thickness all around. See how I have here a little bit of a delicate problem. You want to make sure that your thickness is the same. All over. Okay, so this is pretty much done. So all I have to do, and I will do off camera, once it is uh, baked, I'll let it cool off, and then I'm going to do some inlay of white here. And then it will wait to be sanded and buffed live next Sunday. So I've been on for two hours, yay. And yes, I will do the other one in the spiral. And I will have it already sanded and everything, so we don't waste time, because I presume that's going to take at least 40 minutes to sand and buff this correctly. But I hope that uh, I showed you good tips about making a nice bowl with canes and stuff. No, no, you just put it upside down. Because the, this is, you just put it like this to bake. And it's going to be fine. That's how you bake it. But I'm going to bake it for about an hour, maybe an hour and 15, an hour and 20 minutes to make sure that it is well and nicely. And the other thing, check carefully because you will be able to see if you have any spot where the clay made a bubble, an air bubble. And this is the time where you can, where it's not perfectly adhered to the glass, this is the time where you can go in and, you know, insert a little. But yeah, this is how you'd make the, and you can use flower canes, you can use whatever. So for next time, I'll have the concentric circles one already done and sanded and buffed. And then we will sand and buff this one so I can show you how you can get the perfect little cane slices bowl. So I will see you next Sunday as usual. As And if I missed anything in the chat, uh, either ask in the comments below or send me messages on uh, the Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> and have a wonderful Sunday. What's left of it. Goodbye and happy claying. <laughs>